Hi. Hi. So we, the last time we talked, um, we talked about Brian. Right. And to be honest with you, it's been hard to talk about anything since then. It's It's been a couple of weeks, and it took a lot out of me. I know that. But Yeah, and the comments are still coming in about that blog. We seem to have touched some nerve, yeah. um, and certainly it touched our nerves. So now we start afresh and off the road of mental illness for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. What I would like to talk about today is um, when I go to Washington, D.C., I like going by the FDR Memorial. And when I think about the FDR Memorial, um, you know, when you ask anybody, you know, what do you think of, what do you, when you physically think of FDR, what do you think of? And they're like, a guy in a wheelchair. I mean, he was in a wheelchair, right? And yet, the original plans for the, for the memorial have no image of him having a physical disability. So it's like he didn't, right? right. And, and from what I know, there's only four photographs of him and, you know, just a few seconds of him with a video. So just a couple photographs and, and just short seconds of video showing him having a physical disability. I guess, you know, 16 of his grandkids, including Anne Roosevelt, fought her, I think their own family and the Park Service to recommission the artist to come back. And so now at the beginning of the memorial, uh, you'll see an image of FDR. Um, and it's beautiful. It's one of the most photographed. I'd love to see it. I've never seen it. Yeah. It's a, it's, I mean, the whole memorial is very impressive. It's, a, it's very moving. Thanks for doing this, Anne. You're welcome, Patrick. Um, Anne, could you tell me a little bit, are you um, Franklin and Eleanor's granddaughter? I am. The topic today is, is the memorial, is the FDR memorial. The first iteration of the memorial, and in fact, when it was dedicated, there was no real direct reference to FDR as being disabled. Um, and that came about because uh, the commission, the, the federal commission, um, had decided that they kind of went with the story that FDR wanted, wanted to hide it. What was the impetus for you and your and your uh, the other grandkids, and what was this? Who's who started the first conversation about making sure that the that that your grandfather was incorporated it was sort of show, showing that he had a disability? Who who started that? Well, you know, it was a, it was actually a big topic of disagreement, um, even among the cousins. And um, the commission, though, went with the decision that um, if, in his presidency, he chose to, uh, you know, be uh, discreet about his disability, uh, that that was what the memorial should look like. I have to give a lot of credit to the disability community and to Mark Abristo. Um, who, you know, sort of collared me and um, my, my cousin Chris um, and said, you know, really, it's not, it's not complete. Huh. And um, we will, if you will help us, we will uh, badger Congress until they approve a, an addition to the memorial. We wanted the memorial for us, for uh, our children and, and and everybody's children, because the story of this person uh, and my grandmother is an important one for us to know about and to remember, to, to understand that story of leadership and the story of ability yeah. that was so effective. Yes. So. For the youth of America. <laughs> yeah, sure. really. And I do find that you know, young people get it. They uh, yes. And and the, I'm so glad that that is the statue that opens the memorial because yes. it does. It sets the tone. All of the accomplishment came post disability. I um, every time I go to visit the memorial, you know, you see people relating to that statue 
um, in a very personal way. They touch it, they sit on it, they drape themselves around it, you know, even much more so than the, the others that are in the memorial that the, the big one would follow. You know, it, the one in the wheelchair out in front really sets the tone. You know, our, our hope in telling this story is that um, people will, um, will go visit and get to know your grandfather better. Yeah, family. I hope that they will, and I hope they'll read my grandmother's quote that that backs up the statue that uh, really was enabling. Well, um, I, I don't know um, what else we might have to say here. I, I mean, I just want to go out to lunch, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'd like to really pick your brain. <laughs> uh, Bridget, well, maybe we'll have a chance to do that sometime. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Anne.